All right, Faison, I got you. Awesome, we're being live streamed now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record button. This meeting is being recorded. Awesome. All right, so Dr. Dr. F, not Dr. Death, <laughs> Dr. F, Faison, I got you. All right, all right, let me go ahead and tighten that up and we will get going today. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Word is Right's double feature open mic night. Uh, I'm your host, Marissa Prada. We have so many amazing, fun things happening here at The Word is Right coming up. Uh, we just added some new shows to The Word is Right. Uh, we are welcoming Special K. She is going to be doing the first and third Tuesday night here, uh, an incredible um, um, poetry event, uh, Ready, Set, Poet, that she's going to be doing. I believe it's a write and share type of workshop, uh, open mic thing. Uh, and then um, we also have Coach Josh Smalls. Coach Josh Smalls is uh, partnered with us with Gorilla Poets, so he's come to Word is Right to have his own show. It'll be the first and third Wednesday night, and that'll be, at, at, both of them will be at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and it's uh, writing, uh, it's story time writing with Coach. So he's going to be speaking into lots of different types of literature and writing um, different genres of literature. So it's a lot of fun. You can go if you want and participate in that. They, uh, both of those are free shows. Next Saturday, I'm super excited. Same place, same time, different Zoom link. We have Rich Boucher and Nemo Soom featuring. Those two gentlemen are just so de uh, delicately amazing. <laughs> like They're ninjas of the word. Uh, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, April, we have uh, the first Saturday of, April of every month is our movie night. And I apologize if I'm skipping in any way. Sometimes Chrome is super slow and it doesn't keep up with me as much as I would like it to. Uh, so first, there we go. The first Saturday of the month is Poetry and a Movie, where we do an open mic and watch movies together. It is really, really fun. You can cuddle up in your pajamas in your bed, just get comfortable, but be around the community. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, 1980s Tom Hanks. Uh, movie mini marathon, which is great. I love I love the 1980s movies. Um, April 8th is the book launch party for American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence. There are so many poets who are in this room who are part of what is right, who are part of Red or Green Books, who are in this anthology release. We have a literary book uh, with uh, 68 contributors and we have an art book with 14 contributors that's full color and so I'm super excited for April 8th it'll be at 1 p.m my time 3 p.m eastern we have over 30 people signed up to read for this epic event so you don't want to miss it and then we have uh, Pam Rice and um, Bram the poet on April 15th Stacy Dyson and Diosa are going to be April 22nd and we're so excited to welcome Terry Rose Dirtson to the word is right she's going to be leading karaoke night on the last Saturday of the month so yes if you are looking for a great online place to go to karaoke Terry Rose Dirtson is going to do that for us all right, so let's get going. Uh, rules for tonight. This is not a censored open mic. You can say anything you want. You can say dick and shit and pussy and all those great, wonderful words. The only thing you're not allowed to do is bring any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anybody in this room, you will be gone, baby gone, and not allowed the fuck back in. So please just be adults. Remember, we are artists. This is our art form. Do not drop into the DMs of any of the performers without consent and remember that no is a whole fucking answer. All right, uh, that is my little disclaimer. Uh, Arsene the Poet, uh, who's one of our feature readers, she also has a new show here at The Word is Right, which, oh my God, uh, I'm so excited about. She's, uh, a, give me the days and times, you're doing Thursdays, every Thursday, and we're doing it at, what time, Eastern? 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 p.m. Eastern. It is a, a pre-show to the New Eureka Post Cafe, so we're super excited. You know, Generalissimo has the show before Mondays. Now Arsene's got her show before New Yo on Thursdays. So if you're looking for a place to go, it's maybe a little earlier in the day, uh, or you want to stretch out and practice a little bit for New Yo, Arsene's got a show every Thursday. If you're wanting to come to do a show here at The Word is Right, reach out to us and let us know. We do have some openings available. All right, uh, moving right along. Um, I'll We'll open up the mic. We'll bring up Poetastic, Dr. Faison. And, we'll, and I don't have anyone else. Marilee, did you want to read? Oh, Marianne Peterson's in the house. I'm sure she wants to read. Um, okay, yeah, I've just put together a couple of poems so I could, I could put something up. 
All right, Marilee, Marianne, uh, I know Miss Marianne Peterson does not come here not to read, uh, so I know for sure she's going to read. All right, let's go. Um, the poem that I have for you today is, is uh, some new shit called The Same Old Shit, which is funny. Uh, and I might release this little micro book this year. Uh, I'm in the salty mood. So yeah, here we go. Same old shit. I chose you. I chose you every day until tomorrow was a green plastic bag you quickly deserted on my doorstep, filled with all the things I left at your place while there is nothing here of you to miss. I loved you. I loved you every day until tomorrow became proof that you were no different followed by flowing relief about where the end was. No more waiting, wondering when would it all be over, when you would leave, not if, since you were not built to walk by my side in this life. I chose not to cry. I chose not to cry since you've been gone since it is insanity to do the same thing over and over and expect things to be any different at the finish line. So you left. All men leave. It does not make you special. It makes you mundane. It makes you uninteresting. It makes you unworthy of my grief. I chose not to be angry at your absence because you were simply a guest in my life with the stay power of summertime. And I no longer have to guess when you will check out. I put a gone fishing sign on my front doors. My focus shifts from distraction to revolution to creating opportunities for those who know what love is, what loyalty is, who are afraid but do it anyway. That is where I hang my hat, where I sleep for the night. I am a woman who has healed harder. You cannot break my broken bits any more than they already are. You do not have the power to pain me, to punish me to push me back to innocence, ignorance, ignoring chest pains. So no, I do not feel angry. I do not feel sad. I do not feel a great many things anymore. I do not deliberate your deliberate decision because you were a square peg and I knew you would not stay poem let's go let's go guys awesome i'm so excited for tonight like these ladies i'm fangirling welcome Kristen. welcome welcome all right we're gonna keep going down the this list if you would like to read let me know i got poetastic dr phase on merrily and marianne peterson if i missed anyone let me know and i will get you on the list all right you got it poetastic because you made me feel so fantastic. Thank you for being so bombastic. I love your smile, so enthusiastic. Hello, everyone. My name is Ed Potesso. I am feeling fantastic. Please give me time to enjoy my rhyme for Apple Sublime. Um, I got one short poem and two poems, so I won't take much time. Um, the first poem is um, about Women Appreciation Month. Thank you, women, one and all. Thank you for standing beautiful, strong, and tall. Thank you for balancing our blue ball. Thank you for answering the call. Thank you so much to women, one and all. Thank you. Um, this other piece is called Feminine Flower. Please seed me. Please don't weed me. Please grow me. Please don't shrink me. Please hold me. Please don't pluck me. Please light me. Please don't shadow me. Please water me. Please don't dry me. Please feed me. Please don't starve me. Please rain on me. Please don't storm me. Please soil me. Please don't pest me. Please shine me. Please don't hide me. Please root me. Please don't cut me. Please love me. Please don't hate me. Please nurture me. Please don't eat me. Please support me. Please don't deny me. Please strengthen me. 
please don't weaken me. Please flower me. Please don't defile me. Please protect me. Please don't harm me. Please heat me. Please don't chill me. Please spread me. Please don't drought me. Thank you. I got <clears throat> this other piece. Um, this is glamorous so no one gets hurt. This is gonna have mom and dad learning so many different stages. So please mind the word for these pages. I want to burn some cages. I know, I know, I know. I don't want this, you know. Um, this is called the erotic ocean. <laughs> you slowly hop out of the water. You look sparkly and moist. The temper is getting hotter and hotter. The jokes are coming. I have no choice. This oil illustration will rain down on your body. I want to throw up a lustful storm. I want to become one with your sexual sea. Come closer so you can be more informed. My beautiful mermaid, I love to see your unique scales. I'm your captain. I'm here to claim my golden booty. Come on, sweetie. Let's be free and set sail. Sail towards the deepest depth of your coochie. I can smell your sweet scent in the air. Your hair is dangling in the heat. Let's quickly lay bare because we got tons of love to share. Let me spread the love to your head, breast, pussy, ass, and feet. My warm hand slowly caress your breast. Your nipples are so erect. I can hear you murmur, yes, yes, yes. I only give you a big O if I can be direct. My fingers go around your pink cave like a cyclone. I can see your body sway and move with the passing tides. You flap like a fish lost in the unknown. How I love seeing your mouths and legs open wide. You quickly grasp my sword. You play with your sweet alluring siren song. My consciousness was flying higher than any seagulls or birds. You sing it long and strong. It's time for me to sing a chant of my own. I'm sinking within your pink typhoon. It always makes your heart sink like stones. It's almost time for the feisty and spicy monsoon. I watch how your clam opens wide, your pink pearl beneath the ocean. It looks like it's time for a feisty, spicy, enticing ride. Sweetie, are you ready for your blowhole to have an explosion? It looks like it's time for me to batten down the hatches. My cannonballs are ready to fire. Time to satisfy that pinching ink. It's time to sting as your and my new newfound desire. My ships rise your changing pink seas. The waves are keep going up and down. It felt like a happy, blissful, and free. I heard the pink sea making so many sounds. I can feel the sea about to burst. I sail full speed ahead. It felt and saw the sea quickly disperse. We didn't take a break, but instead, I sail inside you all through the night. The sun shines a golden ray. We slept while holding each other tight as we sleep the deep blue for you away. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go, you guys. Let's go. Unmute your mics if you want. Give it up for Ed Poetastic. He does make everyone feel fantastic. Yes, Ed. Hey, Ed, Ed, Ed. fantastic. Plus, I'm her <laughs> co-host for uh, Moist Mondays. Yes, and Poetry in a Movie Night. He is uh, he is my, my co-hostess with the mostest. All right. Uh, I've got uh, the list coming up right here. For all right, welcome Rich Boucher in the room. He is our featured uh, reader for next weekend. And so maybe he will grace us with a poem this evening. If he does, let me know, Rich, and I'll put you in the lineup somewhere. We're going to go Dr. Faison. And I only say doctor because, like, it's on his name right now on his screen. Uh, so, And he really is, uh, which is so it's not a sass thing, okay? Uh, and then we'll go merrily. And then we'll break, we'll bring up our first feature reader tonight, Arsene the Poet, and then we'll go back to the open mic list for a little bit. All right, Rich, I will add you to the open mic list uh, and we will get started. Uh, we'll get going with that. So we'll go phase on merrily, we'll break for Arsene, Marianne, urban cowboy poet, Rich Vichere, and then we'll break, uh, we'll bring up Tab, and then we'll go back if anyone else joins us or we wanna do a second round. Uh, that is absolutely awesome. All right, are you ready, Dr. Faison? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, well, I didn't know doctor was a sass thing, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can see that. <laughs> you pointed out. Um, how do you say? Um, oh, I just had one quick question. Is it okay if I share my screen? Cause... Sure, let me just uh, update that. There you go. 
Okay, awesome. All right. So yeah, so I just want to show you guys a video poem because I'm trying to I'm working on an interactive video poetry series. <clears throat> um and uh yeah, I mean I'll just show you guys and then you can um hold on. Um yeah, yeah. So uh, I can just show this to you guys and see what you think. Um yeah, all right, here we go. You answer to find inner peace and live a meaningful life. Yes. Peace and meaning are inextricable. Meaning and peace. War and peace. I don't always see two mountains between the inches of snow. The cold asphalt erections, yet I do see a spine, bent in two, then stretched taut, as if by an inner string, as I clear my mind listening to breath, compress the hell, full the hell. Wash the hell with the bed sheets. Sleep. Imagine how hell was kindled. How this came to be. As if we could foresee every emergency. I'm counting vertebrae like a lullaby. Seven degrees of freedom in my neck. A ritual rain spill to my empty certainty until roots branch out blowing into a song of stolen snow and steel and I am left abandoned again by the light broken into colors until monochrome as silent night I light the black tip of another as long as this is someone's heaven then the cruelty might follow us in like a shouldered angel writing to every coarse unwitting sin and every goddamn gallon of gasoline I don't see or feel the arson yet I follow the smoke because the burns on my body have been grafted over with skin borrowed from both the wolves and sheep I want to never to be yet I also want to just be this tranquility a choice we ever had to make because I don't own this my actions are not property these memories and uttered speech Embodied stories and unfinished dreams Were somebody's joy once Squeeze Hours Empty Full And now Yours Tell me, please what gets in the way of your inner peace? What makes it most difficult for you to find your peace? Mute your mics. Give it up for Faison, please. That was amazing. Wow! Thanks for bringing that. Thank you. Yes. That, yes. That was amazing. Um, where can people find you? Follow you? All that good stuff. Uh, oh, um, uh, well, I host an open mic on Tuesdays. Um, uh, Queens Poetic Alchemy Collective. So I can put that up, and uh, I, I'm on Instagram at. And, and Doc Faison. So yeah, I can put the info in the chat. 
Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. But yeah I, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for, for listening. Thanks for not forgetting about us. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to definitely experience more of his work. It is, uh, it's awesome. I'm really glad you're here. All right, we got Marilee, and then we'll break and bring up our first feature, Arsene, and we'll go back to the open mic list. I got Marianne, Urban Cowboy Poet, Rich Boucher. If anyone else wants to read her, if I missed anyone, let me know, and I will get you on the list. Are you ready, Marilee? It's so good to I'm see ready. you. Thank you, and thank you so much, Marissa, for letting me come and read. <laughs> Um, so I think what I'm going to do is start out with a few short poems, mostly haikus, and end up with one slightly longer, but in my playbook, that doesn't mean very long at all, really. Um, long familiar warmth, our hands in your coat pocket, may be the last time. A wrinkle of waves, fingers creeping onto shore, in peace receding. I cross Union Square, a gauntlet of musicians. Sounds fade, then beckon. Single shingle shots, meetups over meds, self-care aphrodisiac. Looking from a plane at tiny cars, one person can still wreak havoc. I see the cross tattooed on your leg. What if you lose religion? Do you cover it up with a girlfriend's name? or mom? Fuzzy announcement. Subways rerouted due to scandalous track work. In this last poem, um, I'd like to have a moment of silence at the end and I'll indicate when it's over and the piece is complete. No. 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 No, 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 no. Thank you. Oh my God, Merrily. <laughs> oh, wow. Right, Nancy? Wow. wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm lost for words about that. Wow. Well, thanks for listening. Thank I really appreciate that. Thank you for being here. That's an incredibly powerful piece. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, don't forget, you guys, drop your social medias, uh, links and stuff in the chat, right? Our son's feeling that too, as I'm about ready to do it. <laughs> invite her up to read. Um, let's connect with each other, stay in touch with each other, help support and push each other up. Um, one of my philosophies on this platform is if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go together. It is an African proverb. Uh, so that is what we do together together we all rise and so that is our, our mission here uh, so excited and honored that our son is part of the word is rights family yeah uh, she is a new jersey based spoken word artist oh snap by the way i'm gonna be in new jersey in april because fresh linen i haven't even announced this yet uh fresh linen is going to be stateside he was one of the original poets we published uh here at red or green books he is active duty military. He and his wife have been in Germany. They just ha they had a baby about a year, year and a half ago. Anyways, he's getting redeployed to Japan, but they're allowing him to come stateside for a little while uh, to spend time with his family. So uh, he's from New Jersey, and I'm like, well, holy moly, uh, I got to I got to come and see you guys. Uh, his wife Ella Diem created the cover art for American Graveyard, the art book, and so and she's also a cover artist for Red or Green Books. So. Um, so I will, I will plan to be staying with Terry Rose Jertson. Um, I believe we'll be in the south or middle, the bottom half of, of, Jer of New Jersey. 
Uh, so if there's, if you know any, anywhere we could go, um, do an open mic or, or something like that. I'm thinking of flying in on a Wednesday and leaving on a Saturday. To, so like Friday night would be the opportune time to do something. Um, and it'll most likely be the second or third weekend of April. I have to book my ticket tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, so put a, put a, plant a seed there, right? Uh, so we can, uh, I would love to meet you. If 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 that if we could do that, all right. Our set is a New Jersey-based spoken word artist, writer, and poet who found love for writing at the age of 16. She has used this passion in many readings and performances, both online and in person, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. It was during this time of uncertainty that she found the power in her voice to speak her words. Her belief in poetry, being therapy, and the feedback from her peers motivated her to begin composing her first collection, Intro Spectrum, which is available for purchase now, so that she can not only empower her own life, but the lives of others around the world. With love and empowerment as a focus topic, her work is tailored to resonate with those who have struggled in life with heartbreak, loss, self-empowerment, and self-worth. Arsen writes for her readers to find healing, strength, hope, and ultimately self-love by guiding them with poetry through her own personal journey and views. To stay in touch with her and her work, you can follow her on Instagram at arsen, r.sen underscore the poet. That is r dot s e n underscore the poet. That is also her cash app, no dot, no underscore, cash app, Arsene the poet. Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give a warm welcome to our first featured reader tonight, Arsene the poet. Yeah, Arsene. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Hello, 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 hello. Hi, everybody. I am so honored to be here. Marissa, oh, am I on mute? Hold on. <laughs> no, no, okay, good. You're I was so on mute. <laughs> Um, Marissa, when you come this way, um, yeah, we definitely have to see each other. I will drive wherever I have to drive to see you. I will see you. Um, <laughs> uh, but I am so, so, so honored to be here. I'm so, so honored to introduce myself to you guys. Um, I usually tend to do like woke pieces for these, for the features, but today I'm feeling a little, you know, soft and in, in, in my feeling kind of Drake-ish. So we're going to go with some Drake vibes. Okay. Um, but before I get into it, uh, let me properly introduce myself. They say to be grateful for your ebbs as much as your flows, because one does not exist without the other. We are rivers. We all continue to stream despite the condition of our currents. My name is Rohana. I am a statistic. I am the one in four women in a group who get assaulted. I am the one in six women to be in an abusive relationship. I am a woman navigating a man's world. My assault helped me find my voice. That's how Arsene was risen. I am grateful for my assault, not because it happened, because of what it awakened in me. I am grateful for my abusive relationship, not because it happened, but because it brought to light the strength in me I never knew I had. And it brought to light my loyalty and my belief in love, because even though love broke me, I still believe it is truly beautiful. My name is Rohana. I am a woman, a person of color, a survivor, and I have PTSD. I am a statistic, but I am more than that. I am not defined by the statistics I so happen to satisfy. I am strength, resilience, voice, soul, heart. I am love despite the doubts this world has shown me i am fully love i am safety warmth being i am the complex web of what it is like to be all of these aforementioned statistics but i, I am also the ease and comfort of overcoming traumas don't mistake my tears for weakness and my gratitude for platitude. I just prefer to be defined by my evolutions and not a token pawn in some political revolution. So yes, my name is Rohana. I am a statistic with exponentially quantitative quality that goes beyond the quotas that my statistics fill. 
I am daughter. I am child of immigrant. I am a woman, minority, and first and foremost, I am uniquely me. And that is my first piece. That's a little introduction to me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the next piece I have, um, I actually felt inspired to share this after I just heard um, the, the doctor speak. <laughs> um, it's my only like, um, I guess like, I've been tapping into like meditation and like mindfulness recently. So I came out with a piece recently, which I actually, um, is the reason why I started doing beats. And like, if you ever want to see like the visual for this, I have it as a reel on my Instagram. It's called Mind's Eye. And I usually like to do this to like, you know, center myself in the morning. And this is the first time I wrote a piece after I did a meditation. Cause you know how like people always say they get, they get um, like motivation and inspiration from their meditations. It like never happened to me before this piece. And so hopefully you like it. And then we can go on to the next one, mind's eye. In my mind's eye, I am in a forest surrounded by rich and varied hues of emerald. No life form surrounds me. I am in solace. In my mind's eye, there is peace. It is silence, but it does not consume me, only to be interrupted by the wind. I am free, but not unhinged. I am grateful. It's an escape from reality. I dream this fantasy as I allow myself a break. I renew. I wake up to an energy shift. As I pull myself out of my darkness, I make my mind's eye my vision. I know they say pain is suffering. They exclude pain as growth, suffering as strength building, both composites creating pillars to bring out our fortitude, both composites forcing us to endure more than we knew, both composites creating obstacles to allow us to create a greater belief in ourselves. So sister, so brother, so bestie of all forms, we are more than we can ever imagine. It is now our duty to embrace all that we are, be evergreen and proud of what we are made of because all of us matters from brain matter to soul matter to atomic matter. We are whoever we say we are, but do we even know the magnitude of all we are? And that's that little meditative piece there, I thought, I don't know, like, oh, and when I first started, <laughs> I wanted to cry to start writing, right? But now I'm like, nah, let's talk about love, okay? And the reason for that is, okay, back to love, right? Like, I think that love is something that we can all relate to, Did did her audio change for anyone else or was it just me? Okay, uh, do you have a Bluetooth maybe connected or that clicked on accidentally or something? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, her audio is weird. Those darn Bluetooths, they tend to, to come in when you don't want them to. Is that better now? No. It was like perfectly clear and then it just kind of went to like you were like way far away talking. Oh my god. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> so so you could see like if you click um on the audio part, you could see if anything else is connected to your audio. Uh if you're on a phone or a tablet, you could turn off the Bluetooth just in case there's a Bluetooth device connected to it. Yeah, um I just did that. I turned off the Bluetooth, so I, that's why I'm like, I don't know. The other thing you could do is 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 a Bluetooth devices if if that makes it. <clears throat> if you have one, I have no idea. That's the only thing that I've experienced in the past that would make that change is usually Bluetooth. Damn, this sucks. Okay, hold I on. I mean, we can still hear you, so it's not. All is not lost. We can still hear you. It's just that you're a little farther away. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're back. So maybe you just need to move closer to maybe when you go farther away from your microphone, it thinks that it tries to pick up like background stuff. OK, well. Uh, you just just keep going. The show must go on. It'll be fine. We, we can still hear you. It's just a little bit lower and farther away. Okay, I'm 
sorry, guys. I really apologize for that. Um, I'm <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, but I was saying that um, you know, I started. I when I wanted to start the set, I wanted to start a riot, and then I decided, no, you know what? I'm in my feelings today. I don't know. I've been missing like the certain person. I think. I met my soulmate in my in my uh, failed relationships. I met my soulmate and kind of walked past him, and I've been having like these like reflections about him. So I've been in my feelings, you know. Yeah, what the heck? I don't know what's going on my with my audio. Um, yay technology, hello. But um, anyway, thank you guys so much for all you're here. Oh, I'm glad you can hear me. Woo. Okay, so let's talk about love. <laughs> um, Shanti. I actually wrote, um, I thought, but then I wrote a lot about a bunch of other ones, which I'm going to share today for the first time. So um, what I was telling you guys before is um, in honor of my book, which is my evolution from broken heart to um, self-love, I wanted to talk about love. And um, if you do purchase my book, I promise you it won't look like this. This one has seen some things because it comes with me everywhere. <laughs> so let's talk about Shanti. Now, Shanti is a Sanskrit word for peace. If you're my peace, you could have my heart in all its pieces. I know love isn't smooth sailing, but if we can walk through battles without our love failing, the joy would have me wailing because I'm apparently difficult to love. The thought of me catching feelings for most has been scary. scary. I didn't realize it until last time when someone I deeply adored found out about the matters of my heart but instead of simply leaving it at no, they started a one-sided war. They even turned their angers toward me into art. Seriously, there's a diss track about me. It is actually great. I recommend everyone go listen to it. <laughs> I never realized I'm so offensive. So to love me is to go against the masses. And with gratitude, I receive your dismissiveness. To love me means you're at peace with yourself. I appreciate you and your blessing. Take a chance on me. I'll also bring you peace. I'll also give you what you need. Embrace my hips. Cradle your head in my shoulders. Let me protect your soul with my all. My dear, you deserve it. I'm not easy to love, apparently, yet here you are being risky. Let me show you just how much of a hopeless romantic I can be. Gaze in my eyes and let me soul kiss me and let me breathe you in let me know let me show you what it means to be royally treated king have you ever been adored unconditionally that's all i can offer you in exchange for being my peace thank you for taking a chance on me even though others have convinced me that it's not that easy i deserve you and you deserve me my love isn't always pretty but i do love endlessly so let our souls collide for eternity and let me love you too, exceptionally. I've always led with love in my heart, but I've been losing hope on if I'd ever have my turn in playing the leading part in my real life romantic movie. But now you finally found me. Your consideration in itself is a reason for my adoration I don't say this from desperation, but rather with admiration because I know that my love has caused others exasperation. But you choose now to roam with me till expiration. I never thought it would be me saying you and I were meant to be. Instead of receiving fragments of your heart, I get to embrace it in all its parts. You remain a dream for now, but I have hope. May we all fall in love with someone who never tires of saving us from our own chaos. And that's that piece. All right. Marissa, you gotta let me know if I'm like running out of time. <laughs> I'm going crazy. All right, I, got, I could go forever. Um, You're good. All right. <laughs> this next one is a mood changer. It's called, please don't say you love me. <laughs> please don't say you love me unless you are ready for, to fight for it. To be a lover is to be a fighter because all great loves are worth fighting for. So please don't say you love me unless you would also fight for this. Obstacles require overcoming. They don't transform into blockages when you mean it. So please don't lie to me and say you love me. 
if you walk away at the first one, red flags, are, if you walk away at the first one, red flags are meant to proceed with caution, but you just throw down your white flag at first glance. Instead of sidestepping the overstep, you walked away with quickness. You're so easy to dismiss me and my human ways. How could you possibly love me? You lied to me so you could lay with me. And now that you've gotten your way, it's goodbye in the safe. As if I'm a piece of lint to be flicked off your sweater. And meanwhile, I connected to you with an unparalleled ether. It's my mistake. I believed you. It's your mistake. You didn't believe me. That's that piece, short and sweet. I'll keep up with the salty, salty, salty theme. <laughs> uh, this one, um, I actually don't have a title for this one. So if you guys can think of a cool title for it, let me know. <clears throat> the crazy part is, despite the hurt, the mind games and the inevitable end, I am not mad. I'm still connected to you, and I still feel the love we have for each other prior to the disastrous end. It's like remembering a home after it's completely destroyed and burned down. I don't remember the turmoil and conflicts. I don't remember the tears. I remember the warmth. I remember the unconditional love that inevitably had a condition. I remember the forgiveness, not the things that were angering. I remember the connection, not the detachment. And it makes me upset that I would rather see this warmth than the cold front it brought because it keeps me connected to you. But then I realize, even if I were to completely pull away, you'd still exist within me. Because if it weren't for meeting you, I would never have lost myself. If I never lost myself, I'd never find myself. If I never found myself, I'd never have loved me, wanted what's best for me, gone after what makes me, me. And then I realize I remember you with warmth because I am subconsciously grateful. I thank you for bringing out my worth so I could realize my worth, so I could bring out the best in me. Thanks to you, I know I am worthy. And because your memories are within me, I am finally free. So thank you for freeing me, by trying to force changing me. I am myself because you couldn't accept me. And that's that piece. And then finally, you know, breakups and all that heartbreak are always sad, right? But at some point we always reflect on what we did wrong, right? So this is my accountability piece for anybody's heart who I ever have ever broken unintentionally because I don't like to do that but sometimes it happens and you don't, you know you know it's inevitable so <laughs> it's my turn to apologize I only believe in love because of you I only ever told people I can't do something because of the depression and heartbreak felt continually for you once though you see, mama didn't raise no bitch. She raised a bad bitch. And bad bitches don't break. They don't need mercy. They don't need consolation. We don't feel sadness. We are not humans, but we are humans programmed to respond like robots for fear of losing our title as strong women because vulnerability is looked at as a weakness when really it empowers us. It's what makes us be the bad bitches we are. And we forget that, trying to oppress that we are depressed, cleansing our souls with tears in the showers from the memories we repress. The issue is I. The problem is I. The truth is I miss you. You invigorated my soul, and I welcomed you with toxicity, left over from relationship remnants past, when really you deserved nothing of that mess. You deserved nothing but the best. And with you, I was blessed. So of course I blew it up with an irreparable blast because I can't let you see the softer side of me. That's what I've learned from my past. Because the last time I, re I revealed that part of me, my heart was completely smashed. Loving you meant expectations. Expectations meant disappointment. And I just wasn't ready. And you didn't deserve 
I'm sorry. I don't know if it matters, but I have healed and I am better. I am now capable of better, but I know I broke that energetic spark between us. And now that I've broken that seal, I know there is no space at the table for a deal, but I just wanted you to know that the affection I still feel for you is real. And if I had the chance to do it all over, I let you know that you're not the problem. It's always been me. And I don't know how to deal with my emotions. So I detract from them in unhealthy manners that have nothing to do with you and how you make me feel. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I made you feel less than when you have always been greater than and you deserve better than me, a human felt disposed of and broken who left the situation after she awakened only to find she was lost in motion and she was overwhelmed by your greatness proportion. You didn't deserve the commotion. You didn't deserve who I was then. Now I'm blessed to call you just a friend, even though I long for more. I brought this on myself. I am so sorry. So that's that piece. Okay, enough love talk. Let's talk about mental health. Yeah, great, great. That's all linked, right? Um, actually what happened was, <laughs> what happened was, right? Like I wanted to write a piece for my maternal grandmother. My maternal grandmother has been like my forever cheerleader. Even when I knew I was being a complete and total fuck up, she was like, no, 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 no. You're not a fuck up. You just fuck shit up, okay? So I wanted to write, of course, a poem for her as soon as I got the confidence to go out and share stuff. Um, my poetry, which I have been writing for a long time and sharing for a lot less time. However, that poem evolved into this and um, I hope you enjoy it. The first time I saw death, I was 17 years old. My grandmother laid motionless on her bed, froth from her convulsion that put her in the state, pooling at the side of her mouth. Kind of like when one is in a deep slumber, drool comes out the side of their mouth. Don't act like you don't know. You know what I'm talking about with a drool coming out the side of the mouth. I, me, just me? Okay. I always thought death was more dramatic, more drastic. Turns out that drama occurred when one gets revived from their fading, like my grandmother did. The breath of fresh air we knew her to be received her breath of fresh air. It changed my world and raised its meaning to value the sanctity of life. Until I met myself in the depths of strife, I nearly forgot who I was, let alone this new mantra I had taken up. I was 29. so. You can guess my age now if you like. <laughs> I knew nothing about nothing, but I craved something. And I was lost in my need of wanting to be found. Anxiety-ridden thoughts filling my insomniac brain. Round after round hit me once, hit me twice. Grief is reckless. The sun could be burning bright right into my retina. And all I saw was darkness. Sleepless nights causing a 504-hour day, causing you to hallucinate the deepest despair is a trip trips to the local craft store to inhale the sweet scents of cinnamon that remind you of a warm home being your only sanctuary as you tripped. Sinking into the dark crevices of your mind, your conscious told you is always wrong. You drown. Waves of tears and anxiety pour over you like a one cloud in monsoon, severing you from connection to others. You are alone. There's nothing to talk about, but so much to say. They give you a pill, a pill that knocks you into unconsciousness until your mind is still. You float back to reality. Reality becomes a dream as you revive your soul and become whole again, whole-minded, whole-hearted, whole human, realizing your humanity is defined by hope, something that you had lost a long time ago. You awaken, I awakened. I found hope, I pursued dreams. I realized the things I thought intangible were actually right in front of my reach and all I had to do was stretch my arm out. Love, support, ability to function, sleep, 
It was all there. That realization took me away from relying on pills and allowed me to start climbing up from the bottom of this hill. And now I rise just like you will rise because our downfalls only raise our flights upward. And that is how we evolve. We are powerful and resilient youth. And while some may think mental health is debilitating, finding ways to cope with it and having to rediscover who you are is actually rehabilitating. Redefining you helps you to unlearn preconceived notions of who you are supposed to be. And as a result, your spirit is free. I am free to be who I wish to be. I am free to be who I wish to be. I am free to be who I wish to be. And while I did not physically die, I did die a thousand deaths. And just like my grandmother did, I received a fresh breath. I am my own breath of fresh air now. I embrace the soil that allows me to stand in it, allow my words to flow as I mean it, allow my soul to sing how it feels and redefining who I have become has given me fresh oxygen. Now I find myself being my own breath of fresh air. That's that poem. And now I got one more piece for y'all and then Let's go. Let's go, poet. One more. Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So listen, you guys, before me on, I'm sure after me, are going to kill it on the stage, have been killing it on the stage, been killing it on the stage. Y'all are the stage, okay? And so listen, we don't give each other enough flowers. And that needs to stop. We can't wait until we're pop smokes of the world. We can't wait until, you know, the last day of our lives to when people are like, damn, remembering us to give our flowers. We need to give our flowers to each other while we're alive. So I wrote this piece. I wanna be celebrated while I'm alive because that's what I need to survive. Tell me how I convinced you to take a dive so that I can thrive. Celebrate me with flowers because being alive is my golden hour. Tell me about my legacy so I know how I am seen when I crave some direction. Regale me with songs and poems about me because I want to be able to appreciate your artistry in real time. Tell me how much I'm loved so I can live without being lonely. Cry with me, not for me. Give my sadness and my happiness company because I want to be enjoyed while I'm alive, because I am not someone who wants to be overlooked until after I die, because I know I'm great while I'm alive. I don't want to be remembered. I want to be recovered. They see it. This may seem like a desperate need to feed my narcissism. And that's why assumptions create the most societal cladicalisms. Less judgment, more listening. That's how we might save lives. Do you get that business? We get so lost in our demons, we cry for help. Sometimes we need a different angle to find our angels. We are so absorbed in wanting to be adored, we forget to show it. It's our most desired commodity, yet we treat it like an oddity. They say love solves all, yet we show it the least. Maybe that's why the world lacks peace. So yeah, I wanna be celebrated while I'm alive because I want my world to continuously thrive. I want to be revolutionary, revolutionary, words are hard. I want to be revolutionary and revive love like the concept is evolutionary. So celebrate me while I'm alive. Celebrate each other so you thrive. And most importantly, celebrate what's around you. So while you exist in turn, current times, you can survive. Thank you so much. My name is Arsen, the poet. Go ahead. Let's be friends. Come to my Thursday open mic. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh my God, you guys, unmute your mics. Give it up for Arsene, the poet. Wonderful, oh Arsene. Awesome. Just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. I Thank was happy you. to hear your uh, your East Coast energy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's a very dry <laughs> <laughs> oh my god from the first poem from the first poem you slapped the shit out of us and then you made us believe that like it was life was still worth it at the end <laughs> like so it was great oh my god thank you oh y'all yes. need to do every thursday night she's here at the word is right to do um her show so you gotta come to it uh you gotta support her please now a lot of times uh we talk about 
supporting the arts, supporting the poets, right? If we were in a brewery or a coffee shop or a venue, we'd have the hat going around. And we'd say, put a couple bucks in the hat. Let's tip the poets. Uh, tonight is no different. You know, the, uh, there's 14 people in the room right now. There was 15 and we lost. I don't know who we lost. But uh, if everyone put two or three bucks or four bucks or 40, whatever you want is fine. You, it's okay to be generous, right? Uh, Arsen says, being alive is my golden hour. So tip her generously in her golden hour. Uh, it, it's, it would be a very nice feature set for our poets. A lot of times we feel overwhelmed because we go to so many events. We don't have the money to tip a lot every time. But I swear to God, if you just put two or three dollars in the hat, buy her a gallon of gas, buy her a cup of coffee, just don't do nothing, right? All of us together doing a little bit is a lot for our featured poets. Go buy her book, right? That's the whole point uh, is supporting the arts, supporting the artists. So uh, please just don't do nothing. Her cash app is Arsen the Poet, R-S-E-N the Poet. Uh, that is her cash app. If you do not have cash app, you have PayPal or, or a different mode of payment, reach out to us, let us know. We have had people send us checks in the mail before, for our featured artists and we have uh, went ahead and, and sent them funds from that. There is no reason to not send uh, any sort of tipping to our, our features this evening. But if you're thinking in the back of your mind, well, I'm not gonna send our send $3, that makes me fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong. Because if everyone who thought that just sent her $3, it'd be a lot different, right? Perspective, people, you gotta keep it in perspective. So just do it, right? I think doing nothing is, is much worse. All right, we're going to keep moving on to our open mic list. Uh, we got Marianne Peterson, Urban Cowboy Poet, Rich Boucher, Kristen, uh, if they are still in the building, awesome. Then we're going to break. We're going to bring up our second feature. We're going to go back to the open mic list. Um, I uh, don't, I, I got Doc Jenny. Doc Jenny in the house. Uh, oh, we lost Robert F. That's who we lost because I had put him on the list. So I will go ahead and take him off. Doc Jenny, if you would like to read tonight, I can add you to the list. If not, that is okay. Yeah. All right. All right, Doc. I got you. I love it. Anytime this man comes through, it fills my heart with joy. All right. Uh, Marianne Peterson, are you ready? Yeah. This is called Look Inside of Yourself. I wrote yesterday, and it's a micro poem. Oh, consisted of three lines. Look inside you for yourself. See what you can see. Remember, you are special to me. That's it for that one. Thanks. Okay, this next one is called The Magic That Is Me. I also wrote yesterday. Magic That Is Me is a very caring person. Magic That Is Me is a sensitive person. Magic That Is Me is a very creative individual. Magic That Is Me is a nice person. Magic That Is Me is a survivor. That one. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what next one do I want. Okay, I'll do this one. This one is called We Have Withstood the Test of Time on the 7th of this month. We have withstood the test of time. We have been together for a long time. Broke up a couple times, but then we came back together. We couldn't see us being apart for very long. I really love you. You really love me. We can't see ourselves without each other. Let's go, Marianne. You got one more up your sleeve. I know you do. Yeah. This one is called The Storm Made Me Stronger. I also wrote on the 7th of this month. The storm made me stronger. I got more brave. I learned to stand up for myself. I learned the storm would not last forever. The storm made me stronger. I'm happier now than I was. I call my blessings now. I am more content. Let's go, you guys. Unmute your mics. Give it up for Maria Peterson. Thanks. Thank you so much, Marianne. It was good to That was right. Welcome. We call her Miss Straight No Chaser, Miss Matter of Fact. I'm so glad your dog is doing better. Uh, yep. Yes, our little fur babies are still our babies, right? And yep. we yep. care deeply when things happen to them. All right, next up we got Urban Cowboy po Poet followed by Rich Boucher, Kristen, and then we'll bring up our second feature this evening, Tabitha. Are you ready, UCP? I am ready. Hola from Mexico. I want to introduce 
Zoe Michaels to the world. Oh my gosh, is that your grandbaby? That's my granddaughter, my first granddaughter. And you could pull her easily because she She's was so born sweet. yesterday. <laughs> so I got her nice gifts from Mexico. And I told people I was going to go to California and meet a girl and fall in love. I'll change that. I'm already in love. I've just got to go meet her. Um, uh, Urban Legends, Cowboy Board Style. I'll do Escape to Death. He robbed a bank and got away, but got picked up the very next day in a local tavern, guzzling beers. He got ID'd in a lineup. So he knew that he would wind up in the penitentiary during 20 years. They didn't never find his stash. He'd hid it all. He hid all his stolen cash before the system done locked him away. He got tired of making license plates, thought to break out and leave the state with all his loot in some. Yeah, sorry. Let me try that again. He got tired of making license plates, about to, about to break out and leave the state with all the loot he did one fine day. What strategy could one prescribe? Perhaps a guard that he could bribe or a legal document that he could forge? Then he came up with a plan. He found himself an outside man, the caretaker of the prison morgue. If you have to sneak me out, I'll be grateful, ain't no doubt. I'll reward you. Let me be specific. You get half of all my dough, enough to retire to Mexico or some island in the South Pacific. Well, when the next con winds up dead, I nail him in his wooden bed and then him on his way to get buried. It's the perfect place to hide. No one ever looks inside. They won't know how many cons they carry. I'm sorry. I know this by heart. Get yourself all set to go. Pack flashlight, food, and H2O before I nail you in that their pine box. Lay yourself aside the stiff. Left to right, don't make no diff. You can't breathe, just give a couple knives. When they dump you in the pit, it'll be scary, I admit. For a while, it won't be very nice. But I'll come dig you out the dirt. I'll bring a clean Hawaiian shirt, and we'll get on our way to paradise. All was quiet late one night. The caretaker was out of sight. He must have left the room to take a leak. There were a body in the coffin, so Khan took his shoes off and climbed inside. He'd waited most a week. He replaced the wooden lid so no one could see where he hid and waited for his partner, partner to come back. He hadn't heard which Khan was dead. He didn't know who shared his bed. The inside of the coffin was pitch black. He got nailed in and trucked away, dropped in the ground that very day. He knew he wouldn't be there very long. The caretaker was his trusted part, a true friend bought with a cash reward for anything could possibly go wrong. Then he switched his flashlight on to find out what unlucky kind of cash it in to be his picking out. Oh my stars, inside him lay the caretaker, dead the previous day. He screamed for help but no one heard him shout. No, there must be some mistake. They had planned this great jailbreak, lauding themselves for being extra clever. He thought he could trust this man. Dying wasn't in the plan. Now it seemed they'd be bunk mates forever. Now, do we know the story's true? Did they even have a clue? Whatever kind of witness could they find? Well, someone must have spread the word. He was seen or overheard by him. I guess nobody. Never mind. Thank you. Gracias. Let's go. Let's go. Urban Cowboy Poet. Great, oh. Michael. UCP. What a story. That was amazing. Nice job, Cowboy. Get him. Oh, my God. You guys got to get his book. His book is beautiful. He was part of the Fierce 15. And we nominated it for a Pushcart Prize oh, last God. year. It, uh, it is, 
Yeah, well, it is filled with incredible urban legends told cowboy style. It's not like anything else that is out there. And they're illustrated. Uh, it is just a lovely book. Uh, please, please uh, get a hold of, of, his, of his work. Only, um, three, yeah. only 300 pesos. <laughs> <laughs> I've sold I sold the books in Mexico. I got followers in Mexico now, um, or fifteen dollars. I put I put it all in the chat, and five dollars. Yes, awesome. Money. Awesome, Greg. I'm excited. I also got to meet Greg Michaels on a number of occasions, so I'm I, I'm really happy to be meeting people live in person. Yeah, uh, all right, so we're gonna. In New York. So uh, El Paso in New, in New York. Yes. So um, all right. Next up, we got Rich Boucher, who is uh, one of our hometown heroes here in Albuquerque. <laughs> Hotel hero. <laughs> I'm going to call you that for now. Um, he also has an incredible book out. Uh, it's not through Red or Green Books, but it is a wonderful book. Uh, and you should definitely pick up a copy of it. He is my kindred spirit in the poetry world. And then, Kristen, you will be on deck. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, I hope I'm coming in through clearly. Um, uh, Mr. Urban Cowboy Poet, I am drinking some delicious single malt and a port cask and I toast the birth uh, with it uh, of your granddaughter. This is a toast I, I sipped to the birth of your granddaughter. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I probably look a little, uh, I've been working a little bit today and a little tired, so um, I realize that I might look a little um, uh, weary you know, it, it, normally in the morning, if my face is a little bit puffy, I'll put on an ice pack while doing stomach crunches. I can do a thousand now. After I remove the ice pack, I'll use a deep pore cleanser lotion. In the shower, I use a water-activated gel cleanser, then a honey almond body scrub, on the, and on the face, an exfoliating gel scrub. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask, which I leave on for 10 minutes while I prepare for the rest of my routine. I've got, uh, we're doing just one poem, correct, in this rotation, or two? Uh, if it's two short ones, that's fine. Otherwise, one, and we'll go around again. That sounds good. I'll do one now here. And um, this is, uh, yeah, the grayscale does help um, with that. The exfoliating mint scrub is definitely a, a thing there. Um, following the recommendations of uh, a great stockbroker, uh, Patrick Bateman. This is a poem uh, called, How Can I Express in Just a Few Words What Has Taken Me Five Seconds to Understand? I asked the adult film star if she would love me for a little while. This was at the expo, convention booth, arena, concourse place where she was signing autographs and taking pictures with all of her admirers who admired her much in the same way that I admired her. Upon hearing my request, she looked at me with an expression of a lovely and heartfelt shock. Her shock was beautiful and sexy, of course, because she was adult and because she was film star. She held my gaze for a few moments, and in that time I thought about my life and how weird it was that I was still alive, and how strange it was that people still sometimes loved me when I couldn't see any reason for the love. The other onlookers to this interaction had no idea what was going on, and they milled about like people who aren't me often do when a thing is happening that they don't think is happening. The adult film star's look of shock melted just then into a smile small enough to fit onto her lips, and she then informed me that I was sweet. Which was nice, but in every honesty, she wasn't telling me something I didn't already know. The only give each pilgrim, autograph, and photo seeker about a minute with the adult film star, so I was already under enough pressure as it was. Everyone had to make the most of this once-in-a-lifetime experience. The guy right before me used his chance to just touch the hem of her robe and be healed. And the adult film star healed him. 
Uh, Yay, Hosanna. My time was running out, and I didn't want an autograph or a Polaroid with her. I just wanted to know if this love thing was real, and if so, could I have some of her love for a while? I'll dedicate that to the fabulous and world-saving adult film actress, Elena Koshka, who is in just delightfully enthusiastic. Thank you. I love it. Yes, let's go. Let's go. And I was just looking at Netflix has a whole Pornhub documentary now too. So like, <laughs> yeah, they caught on late though. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Uh, Kristen, would you like to grace us with a poem, please? And then we're going to bring up our second feature tonight, Tabitha. Um, yeah, sure. I would like to read a poem. Yes. I accidentally turned myself into a panda, um, you know, messing around, messing around with the filters, but that's okay, I'm gonna read anyway. Oops. You have been a part of my life for a long time and it's hard to let go of and detach from all the ways you have affected my thoughts and feelings about you. As for a relationship, who am I kidding? We never had a relationship because our connection was only based on instant gratification. For every time you showed up in the form of an urge or trigger, you had me entangled and engaged in ways and actions that were hard to let go. You had me believe that without you, I would be missing out on an awesome opportunity to experience something that would make me feel better, but in reality, it only drained me of my vital energy, peace of mind, and sanity. As a result, it was hard to let go. After all was said and done, you would have me feeling guilty and shame the next day. I wish I could get away from you and your enticing grip, but it's hard to let go. The good news is that I am not the only one who has dealt with the mind games you played. Still, at the end of the day, it was hard to let go. Thanks. Dang, let's go, Kristen. Let's go. Oh my God. An urge or a trigger. Yep. I have felt those relationships too. Thanks. Uh, sending so much love for you. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. Uh, it's always good to hear from you when you come through. All right, uh, don't forget y'all drop your links in the chat, right? So people can follow you and, and find you and continue to support your journey. We're gonna bring up our second feature tonight. Thank you for being patient, Tabitha. Ah, I'm so excited. And there's like way more good news to come about this young lady uh, that I was super excited uh, for. So you guys, if you're not following her, get your ass in gear uh, because we got big announcements coming up. <laughs> All right. And you look so beautiful tonight. Yes, definitely making us put on our lipstick game. Oh, you know what? I'm going to write that down. Lipstick game. And I'm going to do a whole poem for you <laughs> about lipstick game. You are welcome. All right. Uh, I love it. Tabitha Adams was birthed in a city of art surrounded by nothing more than the image of motivation. Her passion for writing came before she was allowed to express herself. Hiding behind, excuse me, hiding poetry in the back of notebooks, she learned how to cope with the violence behind a gate. Child mal malastation, single parent homes, and addiction have been the tools given to create beauty out of all her broken pieces. You can find the truth to these subjects in her poems but it's in her spoken word that she truly comes alive, knitting tragedies into the voice of comfort. You can find her on the stages of the New York and Poets Cafe, Art at the Sound, Word is Right, Bronx Art and Fun Hub, Art in the Basin, and she's also been a featured poet at the New York City Poetry Festival in 2022. Her publishing can be found with the Bronx Council of the Arts, Turning Corners, as well as other anthologies. Her education and training in writing has come from multiple platforms, 
Gotham Writers, New Eurekan Poets Cafe, and NYPL workshops such as Island and Kingsbridge Writers. Her passion is food, street photography, family, and the freedom of self-expression. You can find her on Instagram, tab, T-A-B underscore 001 poetry. And tab 001 poetry is her cash app. Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give it up for our second feature reader tonight, Tabitha Adams. Yeah, Tabitha. Woo. Woo. Yes, Tabitha. So proud of you. Welcome aboard. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Darlene. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you, Marissa Prada, for your platform. I thank you for allowing me to be here with you guys tonight. I am going to do a few poems from my God willingly. I am going to do a book with red or green books. And I took a poem from each part of the chapter to kind of give you guys a feel of not only what's in it, but more or less who I am and what I've gone through, what are my thoughts, what are my emotions, you know? Um, so we're going to do a, a few of those. And then we're going to, I'm going to break in the middle. We'll talk for a few and then I'll come back, all right? I thank you guys for being here. You could have been anywhere. Thank you for being here with me. All right. The beauty of one is not found before the footnotes. It's in the experience of a stumbling passage that we find ourselves embraced me. As I briefly salute the harmony of my own ray, familiar places become more foreign, sitting at the edge of windows. Bullets I load at the tip of his barrel, refusing to be the victim at my own funeral. I had to come to terms with the things I couldn't control and the serenity to know the difference. I can't change what happened to me. I wasn't the driver to his wandering hand or the actions to their silence. With every inch I grew, I welcomed death. The chaos of embracing my body while I screamed through an open stove, becoming more empty in a world that's fragile, shaped me. My strength, my body, as I grew, I, I struggled with who I was and how much I should tell people. What scars can the night hide and the relationships I won't let come above my bed sheets. Spending years trying to avoid the right man. How long will you protect your daughter from your own war or yourself from the possibility of finding love again? These thoughts becoming the great clouds I fight, walking through neighborhoods that decrease daily. Childhood friends becoming like street ornaments, vein of a shadow we once played hopscotch and manhunt to. This is not the first of us we lose to the war of drugs. Every soldier playing a different corner, wearing colors of a different habit. Community prayers come written on lunchboxes like, God, how many battles do we need to win before you allow us just one? This happens all before the age of 12, where hummingbirds die in bouquets of flowers that don't exist. Least I love the woman I've become, strength, goddess of storms. This, thank you guys, and peace. Um, this next piece is gonna come, it's like a semi haiku. And why is it a semi haiku? Cause I started with the five and seven and then I ended up breaking all the rules. So this is why it's a semi and not really a haiku. Um, here we go. And then I'll probably just jump into the next piece. I open the doors to let the rain out. The truth of all the things we have left under the neighbor's mattress. Making us the noise when we refuse to become the light. Holding the image of tomorrow without us. And peace. Thank you, guys. The next piece is, 
it's a play of love. I really don't write love poems, to be very, very honest with you guys. Um, the only love ex I experienced was very like dramatic and heartbroken. And so most of my pieces have that beauty and broken pieces together. And this is kind of like a play of before it all crumbles. You know what I mean? Here we go. The silence of noise. I searched this decision of goodbyes in our neighborhood church, only to learn that it was I who lacked forgiveness and the parts needed to side with. Life was a rolling hill of questions I didn't want to answer. My own shield, my peace, and my sword tested. Holding sanity in the distance of unanswered phone calls and fake hellos. How you doing? Not fine. No one says that. You just learn how to breathe again. You close your eyes and envision your old life. Waking to the mornings of my true covered in his chest. The sky singing both our names. Waking to the mornings we can no longer have. Though we have journeyed long ways since butterflies and wet fields. I pray that we become again and peace. Thank you guys. This next piece is, I don't know the age of everybody here, right? But I know there's two stages in my life where I fought with my body the most. That was in the beginning growing into it, like, you know, young teenager. And then when I became like, middle age El, the doctor called me middle age I got so mad at her <laughs> um so at this point now in life where things start to look different you get a little line you got a little gray hair or you know so that started to affect me and I wrote a poem about it um and the most important love we could ever have is self-love and it's okay to battle your emotions every once in a while everyone does it guys here we go. Titled Birth After 40. I sit in thought asking where do chariots live after you raise two children? I was just over 40 when I learned to whisper the thoughts of love. Battling wounds of self-neglect, long years have not rested, reflecting the memories of four letters. My bed in the company of a friend that still will meet through the hours of long, picking skin from scars, or I, the young and experienced that couldn't tell the difference between a genuine fuck or a temporary love. The lines on this journey have overweighed me, reflecting the years I have wasted fighting insecurities with accomplishments. Long hours I have put into building this body and her flaws, asking, what happens now when love dies or the wardrobe of my children has become the conversation of a neighbor. And this chaos of reinventing myself, I have lost the good in the eyes of others. Careers have fallen like spirals of old habit, screaming for better directions. So every day I wake to the motion of becoming the woman I dreamed, living in the confidence of my gold touching the sky with both my hands and peace. Thank you guys. I'm gonna go into the next piece. And this is, again, a play on self-love. You know, we get to a certain age where we live, like I, I, I worked in HR forever and not really being satisfied but doing poetry and made no money from it yet but <laughs> doing poetry sparks a love in me a passion a thing that I've never experienced before and I owe poetry so much in my life so this is titled unspoken Emily Dickinson Federico Garcia Loca Jonathan Larson, with so many other great pens that have truly departed before spoken. 
And if we leave this world before our talents have touched earth, then who are we? What story does it tell the wind without the sound of your voice? In my heart, I dream of all the places young I thought I grew. Now tomorrow has arrived and I fear all the days I have prayed to forgotten. The harsh words my shoulders have delivered. The nights I covered in her mistake sit in a dim room. No coffee, no tea, just me and the noise of upstairs. I can't sleep. I can't go on with this life unfulfilled. Wake a person that won't stay silent. She keeps calling me. And as much as I run from her shadow, I pour empty without it. No wine, no water. Who will he change? All the parts given I've damaged. Distractions developed before name leaves me desperate to become greater. Thank you, guys. I'm like I'm in the halfway of my segment or whatever you call this thing. I got like two poems left. And to close with, um, it's really for like a love of New York City or, or a battle of the neighborhoods, which I've been raised in. And, you know, I don't know where you guys come from in the world, but seeing like a lot of addiction and things like that, a lot of violence growing up, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't nurturing in any way, but all those struggles definitely gave me something to write about, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so here we go, guys. I'm going to read this one without the title. This path is not a journey of true intent, but of a story that refuses to be told. A store has a different covering, but if we refuse to leave the areas of which we stand, it's our children who replace us. Long trips around the same pavement has taken someone's son, leaving both walls covered in. Who is it that I have to become to get us out of here? Feeding noise with the curiosity of my peace. This morning, I woke to sirens 40 years. I've watched your father disintegrate. A close casket, a mourning family. We have all been willows that cry to the sight of streets. And peace. Thank you, guys. This next po poet I mean, this next poem is untitled. And much like our previous feature, which was great, she was awesome, fantastic, gave us so much. Um, if you guys got feedback, ask for a title, put it in the comments because I'm definitely going to read them when we're done. And I appreciate it. Um, any feedback, you know, any suggestions. And she's new. She's maybe like two or three weeks old. She's still in the makings. And here we go. I haven't shaved, I'm sorry. I haven't shaved in days. The stoppage in my tub has me parting 20 minutes early just to get my stupid dirty looks. I have sent him a thousand calls. There's no money coming in. And the security of my state has left me with no tools. Standing on long lines in search of a better self has been the payment I received for staying in this place. I have been birthed for too long, working in the areas of someone else's dream. In this battle, I have found that it is only within me that I will rise. Developing talents, I've been gifted, battle lack with the sword of my pen and peace. Um, this next poem, I think I'm closing with, and I really appreciate you guys. I thank you all for allowing me in your space, and it's going to be an acronym poem, right? So I tried to do it where the acronyms came across from the first line and then came down all the way until the last line, and the last two lines I didn't use the acronyms. Um... There we go. 
titled Nowhere Yesterday Called. New streets take men you raised circling the tree of life. Nine yards covered Jose in snow, becoming your neighborhood, creating cemeteries out of buildings. It's not your choice in tunnels of gray on yellow streets that lead you to the corners of death. Now you crown young mistakes that have never parted, courtyards that rape men, and NYC. Noise yells change. Need you clean, not your city. Need your council. No mother should have to view young habits that steal the light out of a boy's smile. Be customers becoming playgrounds, neglecting your communities. Your neighborhood has become less home and more bones. Commuters holding two fingers over the fate of your brother. Need you change. The thought that this yank is in everyone's war. Circumstances will become examples. Not your circle, no young children, not your corners, never your city. Notice Jose, your neighbor's child. Now he watches as his mother slowly pushes her yellow cart through the mountains of his addiction calling the memories of when she once stopped and spoke with him. No one wants to battle this disease. Your skin becoming more thin on brittle grounds, calling all, calling all the names of his mother. Now you cry. Your prayers awakening the heavens, city of God, where no one utters words. Thank you, guys. That is the end of my piece. I'm um, tab underscore double o one because I like the pretty face it makes when I look at it. <laughs> underscore of poetry. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everybody that came out to hear. Um, Marissa, I thank you for your space. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for Tabitha tonight, please. <laughs> That was amazing. Wonderful. Ooh. Ooh. Oh Tabitha, you were marvelous. And um, I just loved that you're hearing your voice and your dialect and your accent take me back to when I was on that on that coast. And I've certainly missed hearing that. And uh, I suggest to you, um, No Money Coming In is the title of that poem that you were looking for a title for. Thank um, you. Woo. And you were great. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I suggested insecurity as the title for the poem. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna now make a combination of the two and I'm gonna thank Word is Right for the title of the poem. <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my done. god, right? So the same thing that I said for our sen, if we were in a coffee shop or a brewery or a venue, we'd have the hat going around and we'd be saying, please put a couple bucks in the hat for our feature readers tonight. Uh, Tabitha's cash app is tab, T-A-B-001 for, um, for any, oh, excuse me, tab 001 poetry. Uh, that is her cash app for anyone who might be watching this back later. If you do not have cash app, you have PayPal or Venmo or a different mode of payment, please reach out to us and let us know. You can send us the funds and we'll forward them to the poet. We do it quite often. Uh, we can absolutely take care of that for you. Please just don't do nothing. You know, there's 14 people in the room. If everyone bought her a gallon of gas, bought her a cup of coffee, you know, or four is fine. Uh, I know they don't, we'll say sometimes drive in the Bronx, but yeah, you get the meat. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying. But really, honestly, I just, I, I have to like give you all the roses. You know, our son is saying, let's give everyone roses, you know, while we're alive, we should give each other roses. Um, I went to the New York City Poetry Festival last year. I traveled over 2,000 miles to get to the Bronx. And then, of course, we stayed in Harlem. And uh, the festival was at Governor's Island. And I was there for about a week in New York City. And uh, y'all, like, um, I travel light as a personal thing. But when you're traveling with books... <laughs> It's difficult to travel light. And when you're traveling to a book festival where you have to set up a booth and then you have 
you know, 30 people sign up to read over the weekend at your booth, <laughs> you're trucking, you're schlepping stuff up and down uh, New York City. And so I traveled 2000 miles to New York City. You know, I was there. It, it was this most amazing epic event. And Tabitha was there on the last day. And I have never felt so tired and so happy all at the same time. But the thought of having to schlep this fucking suitcase back up Manhattan <laughs> to Harlem uh, at the end of Sunday. Now, y'all have to understand, all right, all day Sunday, it was it was raining, not hard, but like slow, steady rain. I live in the desert. When it rains, everyone cancels their shit. If it rains on your wedding day, you cancel your shit. If your baby is supposed to be induced and it's raining, you stuff it back in there and wait until it's dry outside. We don't drive when it's raining, let alone do shit outside if there's water on the ground. And I was so shocked. I got there on Sunday morning, Governor's Island, it's raining. And I'm like, nobody's gonna come, it's gonna be horrible. And everyone came. And not only did they come, but they stayed the whole fucking day with their umbrellas. They are standing for hours in the rain, these people. Like these New Yorkers. Now, straight up, I gotta tell you, my dad was born in Harlem in 1942, all right? Uh, so I am a New Yorker in my blood. I move and shake like the East Coast, okay? But when I was packing up on Sunday and it was like raining, I didn't have an ounce of fucking energy in my soul to move anything to the ferry to go back to Manhattan. And Tabitha she like saw into my soul. It was like a horse whisperer moment <laughs> where she like saw into my soul and she's like, I'll help you. And I was like, oh my God. And I just remember like sitting there and crying because I, I physically was so tired. I hadn't been that tired. Y'all, I'm be 43 this year. I'm fucking tired, okay? Like, y'all come on and she helped me and she was gracious and kind and loving in that and that was the first time i'd ever met her uh and she saved my life that day because mentally i was so exhausted and physically i was so trashed but she was there to help me and like you know she's my sister for life as far as i'm concerned i know she would do anything for me and i will do anything for her and that's how we have to be for each other in this community right if we're not going to help each other schlep that last fucking mile or so you know that's what we have to do we have to do that for each other um it was it was exhausting i came home and slept the rest of the year so <laughs> just kidding <laughs> we're still moving and shaking all right uh so please 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 just don't do nothing do something uh and tip these amazing amazing artists um yeah i just i'm so honored tabitha to have you in my life and to to call you my friend and i can't wait for the exciting things that are ahead for us all right uh <laughs> please tip her all right we're gonna go back to the open mic list I got Doc Janning and Terry Rose Durst, and I have not heard from Terry Rose Durston yet, so I don't know if she's um, here, here uh, in her, uh, if, or if she's, you know, doing other things. <laughs> but um, we will go ahead and go back to the open mic list and read another round, and then I'll close this out. For whoever wants to read another round, whoever is still here is fine. If you don't want to read, that's okay, too. Uh, but let's go. Are you ready, Doc Janning? I'm so glad you're here, Doc. Yes, I am. I am ready, and... Uh... You're only 43. I'm going to be 80 on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, my God. 80 is the new 60. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two, uh, two poems for this round. The first is, is brand new, titled The Mazarin Waltz. The Mazarin Waltz, a waltz of midnight blue, a blue tinged with fire the fire of passion and love flowing from the well of time, a waltz of dreams, of dreams dreaming us as being we become, of a waltz of convergence, 
and ascension of souls, a waltz of the multiverse and the forever beyond forever. And this, this one is metaphor. In the embrace of infinity, the labyrinth of consciousness and strangeness of adjoining worlds, poetry is become my shield on the horizon between night and morning. The caress of time and space explores untold memories lost in canyons of mind, cryptic caves of ages, and hidden sacred, sacred abditories. Kafune winds of forever stir thoughts and swevens amid omniscient tides of eternity and dances through eons of dreams, searching. The voice of distant longing calls from the other side of dawn and all the infinite nows of yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows and the endless matrix of existence. And I become metaphor, a metaphor of being, unexpressed in language as I begin at the gates of the end in thoughts which never were. Thank you. Oh my God, let's go, Doc Jenny, everyone! Oh, it is almost like you are a poet laureate, sir. <laughs> he, he is a poet laureate for all of you, the Mrs. Sass. It's okay, I just tease him all the time. He is the poet laureate of South Euclid, Ohio. And we just love Doc so much. I'm really glad you're here. Well, I'm glad to be here. And uh, ne uh, next month, I'm running an event at our local library. Uh, it's going to be, it, it's being called a gathering of laurels. It's going to be a presentation by only poets laureate from, from our area. And Ooh. then uh, in June, our local garden club is having what they call garden walk. And they've asked me to uh, herd together a group of poets to provide a poem for each garden on the garden walk. And there are mm -hmm. going to be at least 50 different home gardens. Wow. In the event. That's very cool. And, it, and, and it's uh, only to be poets from uh, who live in, work in, or are being educated in South Euclid. That's very cool. I'm a big garden nerd. I have a big garden. I love it. And the poems are going to be not only posted in the gardens, but we're going to assemble them along with pictures of the gardens into an anthology. Oh, that's very cool. That sounds amazing. It's, it's beautiful too. Sounds very beautiful. And because I suggested it, they've now expanded it and they want to have musicians in the gardens and yes. artists doing paintings of various yes. kinds in the gardens. Maybe you could get naked body painters. That would be amazing. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is I not only that say kind that of community. I because I am a body painter. <laughs> <laughs> and I love painting the body. It's so much fun. Uh, but if you've never done 3D body painting, uh, it is amazing. It's so much fun. Uh, yeah. But anyways, Doc, that sounds like an amazing project. Uh, I wish you guys all the luck. Please post, post pictures, post where we can support and, and all that stuff. It would be it would be a lot of fun. All right, welcome Thomas Connor in the house. Damn, it's been more than a minute. It's been like a year. Yo, Thomas, Thomas where you been? Out of here. Man, here. You, it's been about a damn year, yeah. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Did you wanna read tonight? Yeah, I just uh, work and then I did a little workout. So, fine. all right, because I got we're we're closing down the first round and then we'll go back. So um, we'll go Terry Rose and then Thomas and then we're gonna pop back uh, as Poetastic still in the room. So Poetastic, uh, sometimes he winds up walking away from the the mic. Uh, let's uh, put him on notice. If he's not there, then Doctor Faye's on. The good doctor you'll be into if, if Eddie is not around. All right, Terry Rose Jerson, are you ready? Miss Chameleon Chronicles herself. Oh, okay. Um, 
Now I have to tell my phone to wake up. Hold on a second. <laughs> There's one about Leonardo da Vinci. Get to the beginning. Did you know that Leonardo da Vinci procrastinated, which is why so many of his works were unfinished? I confess that I too am a procrastinator, head filled with so many plans that never come to fruition. I read somewhere that this is a condition of fear and that one should take it one small step at a time, my dear. Think of the feeling of accomplishment once the task is done. But what about the tasks that are never complete? They are never fun. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Why repeat once? You're already clean. Isn't that wasteful? I grew up in a time when you did not waste products, water, electricity, minutes on the phone, before unlimited. In essence, money. We all need to lower our bills. It made me somewhat of a conservationist or frugal or cheap. To this day, I hate to waste food. I have a container for everything. I'm a collector of things. Some call it hoarding. I do not fail to see the connection with lack. I recently discovered that hoarding is in the DSM-5 book of mental illnesses. Are we all mentally ill or are these just symptoms of living a hard life? I challenge you to look in the book and find your diagnosis. As with other more important tasks, such as paying bills, I tend to leave those to the last minute, but I don't feel that bad about it now, now that I know that I'm in the company of genius. Oh my God, let's go. Oh my <laughs> God. But that is not an enabling poem for procrastination. <laughs> this woman's put out a book. Y'all, if you put out a book, then you oh can God. procrastinate. <laughs> Get your book. And not only is it just the book of poetry, but it's also uh, an illustrated book. Uh, it has a lot of her artwork in it. There are uh, found poems, black up poems, white up poems. Uh, a, a lot of her sketches are in this book. It is such a great book. So no, you don't procrastinate because you procrastinated. No! You only procrastinate if you get your book done. Yes, don't procrastinate to buy my book. You can well, find right. me on Instagram on the Chameleon Poetic, and you can find me at Facebook at Teresa Rose Jertson, 15 yes. plus shipping, or Red or Green Book. I was just telling our son that I'm coming to Jersey in April for uh, Fresh Linens thing, and she's in Jersey too. And I'm like, oh my God, let's go. Uh, let's come go to ladies. my house, my house. <laughs> let's go, ladies in Jersey. Uh, but I got to I gotta hit you up. I'll probably call you tomorrow because I got to book my plane ticket ASAP. Okay. Um, to find out specifically where to fly in. Uh, AC. And Yes, uh, and where we're going to go. Arsen, uh, let me know what city you're in so that I can. I, I didn't know Jersey was like, y'all, I'm getting a whole geography lesson uh, <laughs> about about all of it. It's We are vast and packed. Don't worry. <laughs> most, most people don't even know New Mexico exists. It's fine. Uh, people I've been like, there. Texas and Arizona. People are like, "Where? What's New Mexico? Is that like old Mexico?" No, uh, it's fine. At least I know New Jersey is there somewhere. Uh, it's the up and down state. Um, most people don't even know New Mexico is a state or part of the United States of America. And yes, I do speak good English for being a foreigner. All right, I get that a lot when I go to the East Coast. All right, let's go. Uh, Thomas Connor. <laughs> I, shit, I shit you not. I am Spanish speaking. I'm almost fluent in Spanish. It's not my first language, so I can't say I'm fluent. Uh, but I do get that a lot. Will you speak good English for being foreign? Mm -hmm. Yep, baby, yep. What's up, Thomas? You got something for us tonight. Um, how's it? I, I sound tired because I did a workout. That happens when you're 51 okay. and try to work out. <laughs> well, good. With that, it's really cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everything is, uh, you know, everything's pretty cool. You know, um, 
you've been writing, really. Yeah. Um, but I can spit some if you'd like. Problem. <laughs> the old stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, in love with this girl from Brooklyn, Catalina, her name. She was on Vandevere Project, Salsa. She was Juve and Junkanoo wrapped up on the Fifth Ave, Afro Boricua Life. We held hands on a sunny Sunday afternoon. Walk as our hearts yearned for food as we dashed to the corner just to kiss. My cheekbones and amber, full stubborn hair. That's the other thing we shared. Was built like a goddess. A smile, teeth, fifth grade, clothes, 81 fashion. She was living up and living cover. We walked to the corner, always held hands, and promised to never be apart. Ended in a peace. Did you hear me? It ended in a. Lose me. I, I we lost a little, so I didn't want to interrupt in case you were doing a dramatic yeah, pause. It's, it's <laughs> not that you probably lost. So basically, um, give me a second. I've been exhausted. You work a lot. Um, um, can you come? Yeah, for sure. We can we can always come back. No worries. Uh, we'll we'll come back to Thomas. We'll give him a chance to uh, to gather up all his stuff. All right. So the second round is not going to be recorded, and it is not going to be live streamed. It is off the books, behind the scenes, on the dark web. Just kidding, because it's not recorded. But uh, if you want to get your butt here, you got to click the Zoom link. You got to be here. You got to sign into your Zoom to get here. And uh, we'll go for a round two. We'll take a quick uh, little like three minute beep, beep, break. If anyone wants uh, to go to the bathroom or update their very empty adult lib libation, is fine. Uh, and our future readers are welcome to join us in the second round as well. All right, uh, so thank you all so much for coming to the Word is Race double feature open mic featuring Arsa and the Poet and Thomas Adams. Uh, please make sure you tip the poets, uh, all of their bios, their pics, their handles, everything is at the Word is Race Facebook page, uh, event page for tonight. If you're watching this after the fact, uh, please go there and support the artists. Uh, for the rest of you, sit tight. Hang on. I got Poetastic, Dr. Faison, Marilee, Marianne Peterson, uh, Rich Boucher. If Kristen's still here, uh, then I got Doc Janning, Tyros Durst, and Thomas. I will finish with a poem uh, to close us out tonight for all of the hardcore poetics in the house. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, stop the live stream. I'll see you all next time. Uh, because next Saturday is Rich Boucher's double feature with Nemo Sue. All right, sit tight, y'all. The recording has stopped. <laughs>